Hello everybody and welcome to the MGTOW Academy YouTube channel, thank you for stopping by. And for those of you who are subscribed that have been to my channel before, thank you and welcome back. So in today's podcast, I'd like to discuss the future of feminism. And I'll also be discussing how it can affect us men. I'll be looking into my crystal ball of logic and will be making some predictions of what the future holds for feminism in us men. So without further ado, let's get right to it. Okay. So, we already understand at this point some basic concepts about how feminism is a women's supremacy movement that carries an anti-male agenda disguised in the name of equality, that feminism never truly fought for equality, and that feminism makes women unhappy. Yes, feminism actually does make women unhappy. What a surprise. Now, also, I want you guys to please acknowledge the fact that the pendulum of feminism has swung too far. It really has. I mean, look at the world around you. It's turned into a gynocentric mess. So with that being said, you guys have understood the idea that feminism leaves behind a trail of, oh, I don't know, destruction, gynocentrism, an unstable society, etc. So now that we understand the dangers of feminism, what's the future of it? How will it change with the current events going on around us, will it spread? Will, will feminism spread? Will it shrink? And how will it affect us men? These are some of the things that I'll be discussing in today's podcast. But first, let's quickly go over what the waves of feminism are. So, the first wave of feminism, like all waves of feminism, was a fight for power disguised in the name of equality. Remember, feminism has and always will be a fight for power that is disguised in the name of equality. Always keep that in mind. And I'm confident that calling first wave feminism, specifically a first wave, uh, the first wave of feminism, a fight for power and not for equality, I'm confident that that is a true statement. I mean, fighting for women's suffrage or the right to vote and not advocating for women being required to register for selective service in the United States is not equality. It's not. Because that is an example of power, not equality. Being able to vote without being required to register for selective service is basically what I see as privilege without responsibility. Look at it this way. The privilege or right is being able to vote. The responsibility, registering for selective service. After a few Google searches, I cannot find anything about first wave feminists advocating for women being required to register for the draft. Remember, to summarize feminism in three simple words, memorize this. Power, not equality. Power, not equality. Feminism summed up in three words. Power, not equality. Remember that. I'm going to say it multiple times. Remember that. Keep that in your mind. Okay, so now that we've covered first wave feminism, let's move on. Second wave feminism is what advocated for babies to be legally killed, also known as abortions. Abortions are still unfortunately legal as of this podcast recording date. Abortions, or the killing of innocent babies, is apparently equality according to second wave feminists. <sighs> now look, you may say that second wave feminism advocated for equality in the workplace or whatever it may be, and that's true, but... Advocating for abortions was a huge. It was a huge part of second wave feminism, which is absolutely ridiculous. Killing innocent babies is not equality. It's not that complicated. Killing babies, innocent babies, is not equality. You may say they're unborn, but yeah, that's a whole nother debate right there. Now, let's move on. Third wave feminism. It's by far the most toxic form of feminism yet. It's messed up society for sure. Look around you. Look at the laws and you'll see. You know, third wave feminism, it claimed to have been against patriarchy and other crap, but it was really nonsense. And it, also, third wave feminism has really been a wake-up call for us men. Now, if you look up fourth wave feminism online, you'll see that it's really about sexual harassment and violence against women and all that stuff. 
And you'll also find out that it relies heavily on technology and social media. You know, cough, cough, Tumblr. Now, anyways, we're currently in fourth wave feminism. But what about the future of feminism? And who will the feminists go after in the future? Well, let's just look at the current events and let's make some logical predictions. To start off, keep in mind that fourth wave feminism was about sexual harassment well, partly about sexual harassment being reported on social media or online where women could share their stories about sexual harassment. And what happens is basically there is a ripple effect. So when one woman sees another woman share their story about sexual harassment, they'll say to themselves, oh, I've had similar situations like that. Then more are going to follow. That's why all of a sudden women are starting to come out about this sexual harassment stuff. Even, you know, on average, it's been about two decades since most of this stuff happened. They're coming out about it now. And I'm pretty sure most of them never even filed police reports, you know, claiming to be afraid of backlash and whatnot. Now, I personally think it's a boatload of dildos. In other words, I don't believe them. How could you be afraid of backlash when filing a police report on rape or sexual harassment? That doesn't make sense. Now... Anyways, let's get to the key point here. Remember that the definition of sexual harassment may change under the laws as a product of fourth wave feminism. They may change what the true definition of sexual harassment is. I think in the future, I honestly think that in the future, you could glance at a woman, she could become uncomfortable, and call the cops on you and have you arrested. Simple as that. And the fourth wave feminists may make up words like feminists have done before. We've seen words like mansplaining, manspreading, and all that crap. So we may soon see words like man staring and whatnot. She tried to, uh, I, I, guess you call, I guess it's like a shaming tactic of some sort uh, against guys. You know, things like that will appear. Man staring, you know, whatever it may be. They, they make up the most ridiculous words. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. The laws will possibly change, well, most likely will change, making it, well, that will make it impossible to escape of being accused of sexual harassment. They can change, or they most likely will change the laws so that it is impossible to escape being called or being accused of being uh, a sexual harasser. And for feminism and violence, ah, you know, I'm not so sure. I know, I know, you know, feminism nowadays is focusing on violence and all that stuff, but I'm honestly not so sure. I'm honestly not so sure because there's so many factors about this. You know, maybe future feminists will teach society the narrative that men are violent or something along the means of that. And look, they're, they're kind of already doing that, but I'm just trying to say that they're most likely going to focus more on that in the future. Also, something that I think, and I'm pretty confident, that the next generation, so to speak, of feminists are going to focus on and complain about and blame men on is men, you know, just basically going their own way, or the male drought. The lack of men being able to, or being available to date or to marry. Men escaping the plantation and all that stuff. You know, they'll call us sexist women haters, go through the shaming tactics and whatnot. So they're going to manipulate, they're going to moan, they're going to complain about how men don't want women anymore and blame it on us despite the fact that more men are staying single and going their own way because of the women themselves. Another thing, another thing, they could possibly, and, most, and I actually think this is possible, they could possibly start enforcing marriage. And if you've listened to my podcast titled Signs That the government, may, the government May Start Enforcing Marriage, you would have learned that a member from the United Kingdom Parliament and an influential body attached to the ruling Communist Party of China has noticed that marriage rates are dropping and divorce rates are soaring, and that the member from Parliament and the influential body are trying to change that by basically creating incentives for marriage. If they're going to start enforcing marriage, they're going to have to do something about it first, which they have already done. There we go right there, guys. The first steps to marriage being enforced, have, they've already been taken. They really have. And remember that feminism is everywhere, including in our government and in our laws. So it would actually make sense that marriage could soon be enforced since feminists can easily affect our government. And look. I particularly live in the United States, but regardless of where you live, no matter what country you live in, especially Sweden, the feminist shithole, regardless of the country that you live in, you gotta realize that feminism is all over the place. 
regardless of the country you live in, especially in the government. You have to realize that. You can't deny that. And that's something you should actually be aware of. Now, anyways, let's get back on track here. So, you might say that it's your basic right to determine your marital status. Either you want to get married or you want to stay single. And it's absolutely true. It is your basic right to determine whether you want to get married or not. But that doesn't mean that the government is going to respect it. For example, in the United States government, the Patriot Act is a fine example. It's a, it's a perfect example, actually, of the government not caring about your rights. It doesn't care about your rights. Learn that. Get it through your head, guys. The government doesn't care about your rights. Now, with that being said, remember that different forms of media affect society. Whether it be TV shows, movies, books, commercials, and whatever it is, different forms of media will change and influence society. And remember that once again, feminism is everywhere, which means that a lot of TV shows, movies, and commercials will have a feminist agenda in its roots. So the media plays a role in part of why our society is gynocentric. And if you've also listened to my podcast called How Men Are Portrayed in the Media, you'll find key examples of how men are negatively portrayed in popular cartoons like Family Guy and The Simpsons. You're also going to see the statistics of the likelihood of men being portrayed positively or negatively in the media. To sum up the statistics, men are more likely to be portrayed in a negative manner than in a positive manner in the media. To listen to the complete statistics and everything else, listen to the full podcast. If you, did, you know, if you haven't listened to it yet, I highly suggest that you do. It will really open your eyes. And, you know, uh, when you hear the word red pill, basically it just means to open your eyes up to things that you're unaware of. And that's probably one of the best podcasts I've ever made, in my opinion. So I highly suggest that you listen to it. And if you haven't, I'll link it in the description below. Now, anyways, back to feminism in the media. We have already understood the concept that men are negatively portrayed in the media and that feminism has a major influence on the media. So it would definitely make sense that in the future, feminism will continue to push its agenda and core principle, uh, principles via forms of media so that society is brainwashed to believe the lies that feminism teaches. <sighs> so look, Fem feminism, it already has a major influence in the media. I'm just trying to say that in the future, there will be a much bigger influence. Okay, so now that I've covered that, will feminism spread or will it shrink? You know, in my opinion, I'm pretty confident that it will spread because with you know more men going their own way and less men being available to women, more men escaping the plantation and all that stuff, women, they're basically just going to have to resort to feminism. That's probably going to be the only thing that they can resort to. Now look, that was a very bland prediction to just say that women are going to resort to feminism because more men are going their own way. Look, I don't know it's very bland, but keep in mind that there are many factors that affect feminism's growth. However, I'm positive that feminism will continue to grow nonetheless. I'm just unsure of how quickly it would grow. Now, finally, how will the future of feminism affect us men? It's quite simple, really. Just go your own way. You will win by choosing not to play. Don't follow the life society tells you to follow. Adopt the MGTOW philosophy, and I guarantee you that you have nothing to worry about. Now, regardless of what the future holds for feminism, please don't stress it out. Remember that you're a man going your own way. Take life one day at a time. Hey, I'm just a guy on the internet sharing his thoughts on the future, and I'm also red-pilling men, so you really have nothing to worry about. Well, everybody, that's it for today's podcast. And as always, you can download this for free at SoundCloud.com. And the link to that is in the description below. You can also listen to MGTOW Academy podcast for free on YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes, and on iHeartRadio. Be sure to follow me on MGTOW.com and on Twitter at MGTOW Academy. For requests to be on a live stream or to just have a one-on-one -on -one podcast together, please send me an email at MGTOWacademy.media at gmail.com. Please share your feedback and suggestions in the comments below. Also, let me hear your thoughts. I want to hear your thoughts on what the future holds for feminism and how it will affect us men. Please leave those thoughts in the comments below as well. Remember, men, it's a dangerous world out there, so be sure to take your daily doses of red pills and to stay safe. MGTOW is an acronym for men going their own way. We spread
the message that marriage and cohabitation with women is no longer safe for men. It's a one-sided contract where the man stands to lose everything. His children, his home, his self-respect and everything that he's worked for is taken by the woman and also given to her by default with the assistance of 